Hello everybody and welcome to another video. In this video I'll be reacting to two YouTube shorts that I have found that I believe contain extreme misrepresentations of the theory of evolution. This video is slightly different from recent ones that I've made and I will not be directly trying to refute any creationist arguments and I'm instead going to be focusing on correcting some misrepresentations of the theory of evolution that I found in some creationist content. Before continuing any further, I have to tell you all that less than 5% of my viewers are subscribed. If you could subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, that would help me out a great amount. And it'll help me do more on YouTube in the future. I also have to state that as the title suggests, I am nowhere near a reliable or credible source in any field of science. I am creating these videos solely to demonstrate that even people without degrees and years of work can understand evolution. All links to websites that I use to research for in this video can be found in the description. I do not have a problem with most religious beliefs, but I do have a problem with some of the straw man arguments that are presented in the shorts that I will be analyzing today. If you are honestly trying to disprove something, you need to be very careful as to not misrepresent the arguments against you. Alright, enough blabbering, now on with the video. Well, we have a picture of Charlie Darwin. Okay, hang on. I'm not sure that this is an ad hominem or not, so that's not actually related to the proposed arguments, but it makes it a lot harder to take the video seriously when the name of the guy they are strongly attempting to disprove is not even said correctly. It is of course Charles Darwin and not Charlie Darwin. Well, anyway, that's not really relevant, but it just struck me as odd. When here, the father of evolution in some ways, and it says here, he never talks about the origin of anything. Really? No, he doesn't. In fact, the name of his book, The Origin of Species, for the short version of it, he never talks about the origin. Well, that seems kind of silly. Why would you call your book something and you're not even going to talk about it? What does he talk about? He talks about new species should come up from previous species. In fact, we have a copy of the page right out of his B notebook that says... I Okay, now with this point, I can genuinely see how it could be confusing. The book being titled The Origin of Species could be misinterpreted as The Origin of Life, but these two things are not synonyms, even though they may seem like it on the surface. But the of species portion of this title clarifies that the book will instead be about the origin of species in the sense that after the creation of life, different species originated. Even though this misunderstanding over the title of the book is understandable, I believe that it was irresponsible to make a video saying he doesn't talk about the origin in reference to Darwin not talking about abiogenesis, when it was never his intention to talk about that at all. I think on top of the very first family tree ever drawn. Yet magazines and textbooks talk about how we all came from some primate ancestor, which is ludicrous. Right, some common ancestor of some sort. It's nonsense. What does the Bible say that we came from? Everything reproduces after its own kind. So if somebody's a human, <laughs> they came from an another human. God tells us that we were made in his image. It's all right, they were pretty vague with a lot of the wording here, so I'm not exactly sure if there were misconceptions or not. But if the claim that you're making is that we evolved from the primates that we see today, then it is absolutely a straw man argument as no modern reputable scientist would claim such a thing. It is believed that humans and today's primates share a common ancestor. And a common ancestor is an idea that you brought up near the end of your video, so you at least know what the concept is. But just stating it as ludicrous or nonsense is not a valid argument. Alright, so this is the second short that I will be analyzing today. With the first short, I could at least understand where the misconceptions arose, but the second one is irredeemable. Speaking of evolution, to go from a primeval ape to a human being takes trillions of transitional forms, trillions of mutations and transitional forms. To go from a dinosaur to a bird, a whale to a cow, right, trillions. It's interesting, Darwin, The Origin of Species in 1863, he says, we're going to find them eventually. We're going to dig up the earth. We're going to find all these trillions of transitional forms from ape to human being. What have we found? What does the fossil record show? Trillions? No. Billions? No. Millions? Yeah, no. Thousands? No. Hundreds? Come on, 100? No. A dozen? No. Six or seven? Maybe. And they're probably extinct apes that they say oh these are the missing these are the trillions of transitional forms okay interesting all right i know in the past video i said i found a straw man that put all of this to shame but this straw man 
This is on a whole nother level. Where could you possibly have found that claim among scientists that you would have to find trillions of transitional fossils? And what evidence do you provide that only six or seven of such fossils have been found? Absolutely nothing. If the vast majority of the scientific community accepts the theory of evolution, then your extraordinary claims about there being inadequate fossil data requires extraordinary evidence. And the only extraordinary thing you've provided to me is an extraordinary waste of time. And this means that evolution is not a means of transforming from one organism into another, but instead we are all transitional animals.